Hello. Jimmy from Heary Campus. Uh, there's two things I want to talk to you about today. One, this documentary that we're trying to do, uh, 75 years of um, since the end of the Second World War. We're still running into problems with that with COVID-19. Um, and I suppose it's not a problem, it's one of those things we've got to get over. But we're trying hard, we're trying really hard, but uh, Australian health is more important at this stage. So, But anyhow, hopefully by June, July, August, maybe even September, we can probably go from Bankstown to Cape York, tracing some of our uh, courageous airmen back in the Second World War, what they did and where they went. Now the second thing I wanted to talk to you about was how much it does cost and how daunting it seems to be for somebody to go on a camping trip. It's not all that difficult really. If you've got something like this as a, as a Black Series camper, um, like this is the Alpha, probably one of the better ones, but you're only looking at 10 grand, plus a few other little incidentals. incidentals. But on top of all of that, I'll just run through a couple of things like this rack here comes with the, uh, this trailer. Now, it's a boat rack, so you put a boat on top of it. But you can carry a lot of stuff on top. The worst part about it is, when you get to where you're going, if you've got the boat rack with you, you've got to take this rack off to fold up this camper. Um, to me, that's a bit silly because you can carry a lot of gear on top, like you can carry firewood as you find it, you can carry extra fuel, you can carry extra water, you can carry extra tyres. Um, or, what most people do is strip the boat rack down to a bare camper and leave it at home. I really can't see the sense in that either. So, this, these gas struts here, there's one here and one on the front, are my design. They came from a from a bloke here in Orange that actually does this for a living and he's really, really good at it. So if you think you want to do this with your um, your Black Series camper, give me a, you know, send me a message on um, uh, hairycampers at gmail.com and uh, I'll pass you on to Peter, uh, who's got a real lot of experience when it comes to these things and, uh, you know, his advice is, is just, yeah, it's outstanding. We had three goes of getting the gas right, which he said we would. And that's part of the cost. You know, it's $50 each for each gas strut. But you'll see how well it works. You know, and it does work really well. So, basically, before I do that, I just want to show you something here. Anderson plugs. These Anderson plugs, you can hook up without worrying about positive to negative and negative positive because if you hook them up the wrong way you'll get a short or you'll blow something up or worse the lot is that regulator that controls everything in there you'll destroy it now that's negative at the top and this is positive at the bottom that's the way they go together and that's the only way they'll go together now if you turn them around they will not go together it's just impossible so if you're trying to push this together, or someone else that hasn't got the experience, push them and click them. That's how they go. They're a must. Now we have two of them. We have one here and one on this side. The reason for that is so we can run another solar panel and use that regulator. All right, back to the rack. The rack is a one-man operation. Um, I've got 100 kilos of lift in those gas cylinders. So it, it will go up. It's not all that hard to do. It's just that you have to be a little bit mindful with it. Um, you can see how that's the first bit of it and it goes up fairly easy. So, now, when you get that, that point there, it's just a matter of letting it come down. It'll come down and get to the end. It won't fall down. So those struts work really well. These things here, I'd like to say they were my design, but they're not. I work with a bloke up in uh, Queensland, at, uh, uh, up at St George, 
and he made a lot heavier ones for hydraulic rams in a machine that was working on to lock it out. So basically that goes up underneath the rod there, push that up and uh, it sits in there and we've got one up at this end to go in this end here. Now you can put a little bit of weight on that, not a great deal. The whole idea of it is, is just to hold that up. Now, if you want to put more weight on top of it, come back down here. Now, every camper that I know knows about these pipes. Cheap as chips, they're from Bunnings. If you put that pole up in there, take those retainers out of there, drop this down on the ground level, you can still walk under it, then you can put all your gear on top. What we'll do, underneath the tarp we've got um, we've got the roof of the annex and the walls and a few other bits and pieces. When we get to where we're going and we're only staying overnight, we'll put this into position here and we'll put all that gear on top without the retainers. They wouldn't be strong enough to hold all that up there and I wouldn't want to try anyhow. Um, but anyhow, we'll put that back in there. That's that's that. Now, with this um, solar panel here, Mr. Wilson was down at BCF and she was looking around down there and she came over and she said, there's a solar panel over there that I think we should look at. And I said, yeah, okay, all right, well, I'll go and have a look. So I went over there with her and uh, she said this was $329 and it's down to $219 now. Um, now with that you get, it's a, um, it's a fairly big solar panel. Um, you get all the brackets and you get that regulator that's in there. You get that two at the same time. All for the $219. Um, so to me that makes a great deal of sense. So we brought that. So let's just have a look at what we've got. We've got $50 each here, which is 100 So we're looking at around about, by the time we welded all of this on, because this is beyond design, um, by the time we did all that, you're looking at probably 350 bucks to do all of that. No real, that's no real cost. What I'm saying to you is, if you've got one of these campers or you're thinking about buying one, and you're worried about cost of what I've done, it's minimal. It's not that expensive, unless you go to some of the camping suppliers, some of the camping people that sell all the uh, after aftermarket gear, and you'll go in there and say, I need to go to Cape York. And the first thing they're gonna say is, you need this, you need that, you need something else. Don't worry about that, it's, too, it, it's not expensive enough because the dearer it is, the better it is. That's not always the case. So if you think about it and plan and give yourself enough time to plan, you can minimize the cost by just resourcing and relying on other people's experience. Like I said, if you wanna know anything about this, this system that I've got here, hairycampers at gmail.com and I'll definitely help you with anything I possibly help you with. Um, so that, that's a must on that. But anyhow, enough about that and the solar panel. Um, going, going to Cove York is where we're going to go to. Um, and, and this will be a five to, or four to five week trip. Um, now, there's, there's a bloke that I follow on um, YouTube and his name is Mr. Buckaroonie. If you wanna know anything about Cape York, he's been there two or three times, I believe, or more than two in here. And he's a great believer in, you should have hard copies of maps. That's true. This one here from ARB is Cape York book. It's all about Cape York. It tells you in there what you can do, where you can go, what not to stick your fingers in, what to be careful of. You know, like here we've got snakes, which is the Eastern Brown. We've got that up there. Jellyfish, don't get in the water. Snapping handbags, right? 
these things crocodile don't go near the water if you've never been involved with these crocodiles don't go near the water feral pigs be careful of them that's the type of thing you've got to look at all that type of stuff is in this book and look it costs 49 dollars so it's really not that expensive to do all that kind of stuff that's the book cape york right now why do we have two because this is another book that actually tells you where you can camp free camping or stay at a caravan park or whatever you want to do it also tells you whether it's pet free whether it's uh, they've got water whether they've got sewage they've got washing machines they've got whatever whatever you got so it's not expensive it's another 50 dollars but it's got good maps in it and so is that one got good maps that's hema this one here i don't know it just it's um just a camping guide but the maps are good so you can compare this map with that map and make a decision why your phone might fall in the water you might lose it it might get stolen you might run over it your gps might die so at the end of the day you are better off having some kind of hard copy okay spare tire the jeep has one of its own spare tires that's its second spare tire so we've got we have got um, two spare tires for the jeep it's an aluminium rim probably everybody says you should be using steel but it's the weight factor with um, the drawbar we're only allowed 350 kilos downforce on the drawbar so that's why we're looking at weight fuel drums that'll give us they're 220 litres there. Now, here we have another 220 litres, which gives us 40 and 40, which is 80 litres. 80 litres of fuel all together. That gives us probably around about a second tank. So we haven't got to go and spend $1,500, $1,600 on another tank. Just got to be careful with fuel drums. Make sure there's no water in them, dirt, dust. No contamination whatsoever. Okay, I went down to BCF, and this time it was in without Mr. Wilson. And these things are a must. Sometimes you get a flat tire, and all you've got to do is pump it back up. Other times you can put a, um, you are able to put a plug in it, which is simple, and then you've got to pump the tire back up. That's no real drama. This compressor here from BCF was $135. I thought that was fairly cheap. But because Harry Campers are a club member, it was reduced to $99. Now inside of that you get a hose which will go from the car to the trailer and wherever, you know, from the very front of the car to the very tip of the trailer. And a gauge and some tyre fit. Um, Adaptive so you can pump tyres up and balls and things like that. Okay, most important, Anderson plugs. If, you, if you've got Anderson plugs everywhere, it's, it's infallible. Nothing's going to go wrong. Not hard to fit. Um, they're not very hard at all. I can do them. If I can do them, anybody can do them. That means when you plug this in, you don't plug it in the wrong way. Um, and I don't know if you plugged it in the wrong way whether that would work or not. It's got a circuit breaker on the back of it. Possibly it might trip the circuit breaker out. But it's one of them things you just don't want to happen. So that's a compressor. That's a must. So at the end of the day, we put this checker plate up here that's strengthen the top of the box so it can carry the spare tyre and the extra fuel and it doesn't slip around. And there's a set of straps that go over the top of that. Everybody that uh, has anything to do with four wheel drive and camping, they'll know straight away as soon as I lift the box up, the bag up here what this is. Uh, we've got a snatch strap in this side here. We've also got a, a, a winch uh, extension. And in the other side, and it's got really good Velcro. It's so hard to get apart. So that means you haven't got to worry about picking it up and everything falling out. Uh, tree protector which is just there 
and also a snatch block. <coughs> 20 years ago, I bought one of these for nearly $100. Is the cheapest one I could possibly get. It was nearly almost 100 bucks. This whole thing here, including the bag from BCF, is $135. And I thought that was great value at $135. But club members get it for 109 That's, you know, that is worth every cent. Now, if you're only going to use it once, twice, three or four times, great. Some people say, it's not going to be reliable. Let's hope we never have to use it. We're not going to put ourselves in that position. All right, moving along with BCF again. Match tracks, or whatever you want to call them. Plastic Fantastics. Great in sand, great in mud. If you need to lift your vehicle up that far to climb underneath it, put the match tracks down and drive over the top of them. Um, you can stand them at the top of each other. So if you need to get underneath something with these jeeps, if you want to check to see if you've got any water in your fuel, there's a little screw in the bottom of the fuel tank, which is where the filters sit and the pump. But I can't climb under there, I'm too fat. So what you've got to do is put two of these fax tracks together, drive your car up on it, and you can get to the little screw. Undo it, open it up, let the fuel run into a glass, screw it back up again and see if there's any water in it. All right. Um, I ended up getting those for hundred dollars a pair, that's fifty dollars each. VCF, just go and have a look. All right, now we have on this end here, which is another Anderson plug, which is hooked to glass mat battery there, glass mat battery over there, and a glass mat battery in the Jeep. Now. If for some unknown reason I left the fridge on and the battery went flat, which is an impossibility, it can't happen, but if I left the fridge on and the battery went flat in the Jeep, if I was to take this lead, which has a substantial lead on it, if I take that lead and plug in the car and come back down here, there is a switch right here now that's the Anderson plug service switch if I turn that on there like that that will charge the flat battery and make it able that I can start the car so but you need to have glass mat glass mat glass mat or you need to have lead acid lead acid lead acid They've all got to be around about the same sort of battery so it works well. <coughs> this solar panel and the other solar panel that I've got inside the camper is almost 300 watts. That's well over 20 amps of charge. So there's no problem. Um, in the bag, you never know what you're going to do. It's a little tiny inverter, 150 watt. Set of jumper leads. Wait for old mate to go past in the garbage truck. Set of jumper leads. In this situation, I may need, may never need that, but it's always good to have it. They weren't, they, they were twenty odd dollars. They weren't even worthwhile worrying about. Like you know, as cost wise. Most important is another regulator for the solar panel. Twenty six dollars on eBay. Not, not expensive, not expensive at all. Um, and what we've done, we've put bubble wrap around the outside of the box and then we've cry back it. So you could drop it in, it could go in the water, this thing could leak water, it could do anything. It's not going to affect it, that. With a bit of luck, you never ever have to use it. But, anyhow, and a little bag like this, I don't know where I got this bag from, I wouldn't have a clue. I think Mr. Wilson might have brought it home from Vinnie's, I'm not sure. But, in saying that, it's it's a really handy bag just to have everything in the spot that it's supposed to go to. This tarp here, this uh, this is made out of shade cloth. Same thing again. Mr. Wilson and myself, we sewed it up 
on the sewing machine inside. If you don't have this tarp and you've just got all your stuff sitting on the top and it's even strapped down, the wallopers can come along and give you a piece of paper to the effect of about $600. Now that's called insecure loading. And there's also points involved in that. And I think it's anywhere from, from four points to six points. $28 I think it cost us. And we bought a little bit of bungee strap here and put that around there. So, same thing again. If you want to go away, don't be hamstrung because you think it's going to be too expensive or you can't make the cost or whatever. It's just rely on some of the experience like myself and other people have got in asking the question, do I need to do this? Do I need to go and see these people about buying that? Most times, no. You work out where you're going. Most of these people want to sell you stuff to go to uh, probably to Kakadu where you're going to get bogged every day and have to dig yourself out. You're not going to go there or I'm not going to go there. So why why prepare yourself for the worst when you know you're not going anywhere near the worst? All right, moving along. Um, this is pretty good insurance. Um, hopefully I'll never ever have to use this thing, but if I do have to use it, the $1,500 I paid for it, and that's fitted of course, from ARB here in Orange, they done a fabulous job. Like, everything is in the spot that it's supposed to be, it doesn't look stupid. They even took me light bar, that was here, and put it up in here with the two brackets, and made the brackets for it. Done a fabulous job, I, I mean, and, and I am, totally happy with it really really happy with it um, it's a remote control and it's also a cable remote so you know best of both worlds um, that's that's about all I can tell you about it but like I said you want to know anything at all send me an email hairycampers at gmail.com and I definitely will answer any question you've got to ask or go to comments but anyhow don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.